Hey, it's Trisha here at Club Scrap, and I've got the fun and games collection here. We're gonna make pages today with everything that comes in the box. In fact, this is the scrap you'll have when you are finished making all eight pages along with me. So really proud and excited about that. To get started, I'm gonna uh, set aside all of the goodies. And this kit has a plentiful array of really fun page embellishments that you're gonna be able to use this month if you choose. And I've got my trimmer handy here, and of course my accordion pocket file, and I developed this a number of years ago to help me stay organized. I think it's time for me to make a new one. You too can make one. We've got instructions and starter kits that you can uh, pick up if you are interested in making your own organizer. So as we trim our papers, we'll be filing them into the pockets according to the layout that they're going to be uh, used on. Now we do have these pre-cut photo mats in our monthly kits, so let's go ahead and get those filed in the appropriate spot. We'll practice our filing skills. So uh, for page one and two, we're going to grab a total of three of the black photo mats. Now, uh, you're going to automatically get three of each color, typically. So that goes in pocket labeled one and two. And then we're going to take three of the taupe pattern. Now, there's a difference between the white and the taupe. Do you see how this has more of an eggshell tone to it? And this is more white. So grab the taupe pattern. Those go in three and four. And then we'll take the three white into five and six. And then we've got the three red going into pocket seven and eight. Now, before we start trimming the paper here, let's get it into the order we're gonna be using it, and that helps us avoid errors. So just uh, grab the whole stack and hold it in your arm, and we're just gonna go ahead and select that sheet on the top. This is um, the board's print. And I'm gonna turn that face down on the top of my trimmer here, and then we're gonna find one sheet of the taupe metallic. So this is that shiny paper with a beautiful texture. It's lovely uh, weight paper. You're gonna enjoy working with it a lot. And then we've got this black paper. We're gonna grab one sheet of that, and it's again very, very heavy at a hundred pound cover weight. And then finally a red plane here. It's easy to identify the papers this month. Next we'll be trimming the cut aparts. Those are uh, in the back here. Let's go ahead and find the one that says a winner is a dreamer who never gives up. We're gonna put that face down. And the other one that has all the circles on it. Then find the target print. So this is one of the, the target prints here, put that face down, followed by the other taupe metallic. Now, if you'll notice, there's a there's a, a ridge texture on one side and it's smooth on the other. So I'll put it, uh, the ridge side face down so it'll be right side up later. Uh, then we're gonna take the remaining boards print. That's this one here, face down, followed by a red. Should be just the last red you've got there. And then another black gets added. And the other target print. And then you've got the two taupe patterns. And again, the, the side doesn't matter. The pattern is right on both sides of that paper. And we do have this sheet of uh, die cuts. What you can do is just separate these pieces out into their individual frames. Um, in order to create a die cut, you have to sort of nick the die so that pieces don't fall out uh, in transit. So in order to prevent any of those little perforated nicks from showing, you could sort of pre-score them with a craft knife and cutting mat, but it looks quite great without having done that. So go ahead and right now you can uh, separate these die cuts. Once you get all of those separated out, you can keep them handy. I do have a distribution map for all, all of these wonderful pieces. The larger ones are gonna be a little bit more unruly, but maybe we can file a few of these smaller ones. Let's take the center. Uh, this one's gonna go in pocket five and six. Fun and games goes in three and four. This other squarish one, we're gonna to add to seven and eight. And then this medium one here, three and four. Here we've got this decorative border happening here on uh, going into three and four. And this next one goes in three and four. And if you want, you can just set this large one aside since it's not gonna fit very well into our accordion pocket file. Now you can take all those papers we sorted and turn them so that that initial print is right on the top. 
Now for this first one, we're not gonna trim it. We're gonna be uh, cutting it actually along this decorative line on the print. And you can do this two ways. You can grab your um, scissors or you can take a cutting mat and a craft knife and kind of freestyle it a little bit. That's what I'm gonna do. This gives me a nice separation between those two pieces and that's all I need to do for now with my cutting mat and craft knife. Now both of these pieces are used in layouts one and two. So once again, I'm just gonna set them aside so that, uh, cause they're kind of unruly for our pockets this month. Next, we're gonna take the taupe metallic and I'm gonna go easy on you today with trimming this one. A uh, super easy cuts on nice whole numbers. So let's go ahead and trim the piece in half at six inches. And then we'll stack these two six by 12s and we'll trim them at the same time at eight and four to get our six photo mats. Now what's nice about these mats is that they are going to nest perfectly on the pre-cut mats. Do you see that? It just fits right, oh, right in there so well. So two of these are gonna be placed in pocket one and two. Two more will go in pocket five and six. And the last two will be placed in seven and eight. And we've already got two of our sheets all done. Okay, now the next one is black in the pile. So we're gonna trim this one at 11 and a quarter. And as you're cutting, just always make sure that the paper is level at the top and that you're pushing down on the clear bar, especially with these heavier stocks. Then slide down to 10 and a half, nine and a quarter, and then six and a quarter. Next, rotate the six and a quarter inch piece and we'll cut at eight and a half and four and a quarter. And that gives me two more mats and I just wanted them in the nice black tone here. Those are gonna go into pocket three and four. And then you've got the skinnier piece we'll use in one and two. Now you have the three by 12. Let's trim this into thirds. So, so we're gonna cut at eight and four. Two of these rectangles go in pocket seven and eight, and the other one goes in five and six. And now we have these narrow strips that remain. All three of them are used in pocket one and two. So just put these into the pocket at an angle so you can still see the label of the pocket on one of the sides. Next, I'll take the red. This is just make sure you have one sheet. Our first cut's nice and easy at 11 inches. And then 10. Eight and three quarters. Seven and a quarter. And four and a half. Rotate that four and a half inch piece. We'll cut at 11. And six and a half. Okay, so this large red piece, this goes in pocket five and six, and the square is gonna go in pocket seven and eight. Then we have this small piece here. We're actually gonna trim that at three and three quarters and place that in pocket one and two. And this is the point in the story where you get to meet your very own scrap from the entire eight pages of uh, layouts. Okay, the next strip, this is two and three quarter by 12 right now. We're going to cut horizontally at 11, eight and a quarter, five and a half, and two and three quarters. And you just made a bunch of squares and a little piece. So two of these squares will go in one and two, and the others in three and four. And then you have this tiny little piece going in seven and eight. Now we have strips. The top two strips in the stack or the two larger ones, those both go in seven and eight. And then you have the skinny ones in pocket three and four. We've reached our cut apart trimming session. And just as a reminder, especially if you're new, uh, there are, if you look at the corners, you're gonna see a little plus sign in the corner of that paper. And I'm gonna align that edge or that line with the edge of my trimmer base to remove a little bit from the perimeter because right now this is like a 12 and a quarter by a 12 and a quarter and we want to trim this down to a 12 by 12. The idea being that you will be a much more accurate trimmer of this paper than those massive industrial trimmers that we use to uh, to crop the edges here. 
So work your, work your way around the whole perimeter until you have this perfect 12 by 12. And then you can dispose of the little eighth inch scraps. And the way we wanna begin trimming our cut apart is to have these narrow strips on the right so that the majority of this cut apart is sitting on the base of your trimmer. And our first cut is going to be at 11. And then 10. Nine and a quarter. Eight and a half. Seven and a quarter. And four. And you'll notice we're not filing anything right now. That's okay. We'll do it strip by strip. So now this strip needs to be rotated so that we can trim it at 11. And five and a half. So the winner piece that goes in pocket three and four and then this one in five and six and the little aim high is also five and six on the next strip we're going to make sure the word date is on the far right and we'll cut at eleven and a half this time eight and three quarters and six all right, this piece as well as the vertical journaling prompt. I really think this is an attractive journaling prompt. He's kind of cool. You know, if you want, you can trim off these edges uh, with an eyeball, with the, the one-eyed cut. So basically, I align this artwork with the edge of the blade and move it away a little bit and bring the blade real close. So you're almost touching that paper and line it up so that that reveal, that margin you're leaving, matches the margin on the other sides of the piece and I just cut off those little angles to give this a little bit more dimension so again both of these go in pocket one and two and we have those little itty bitty I'll remove this as well at this point oops I think I got a little too quick there that's okay and then this one is going to go in pocket three and four and then we have a tiny little piece that says date all right, my little date piece disappeared for now. It, it was there, I know. So that one's, if you have it, it's going to go in pocket seven and eight. <laughs> not sure what happened to him. He's around here somewhere. I'm not worried about it. Um, okay, then we have, it's a happy talent to know how to play. That goes in five and six. And then these two checkerboard patterns, uh, those go in three and four. And then the uh, game on seven and eight. This is where the fun fun stuff happens. That's one and two. Love that. Okay, now we have one more sheet of cut aparts. And so I'm going to go ahead and remove the perimeter. And you do the same. And as I'm doing that, just as a reminder, if you're new and the pacing is just extremely fast for you, I understand and it's okay. Um, you might find it helpful to maybe watch it through once just to kind of see how it all comes together. And you can also adjust your playback speed on your uh, YouTube channel settings to a slower pace, like 0.75 seems to work well for some people. And I'll get rid of the perimeter of those scraps here. And we're going to go again with our strips on the right. So we remove those narrow pieces first. And we'll begin at 10 and 3 quarters. Then 10 and 1 quarter. Nine and three quarters, seven and a quarter, and three and three quarters. Now rotate so that the word winner is on the right. Winner on right. We'll trim at 11, eight and a quarter, five and a half, two and three quarters. Now I have an angle, I'll do the one eye, and just snip that off carefully. And this one goes in seven and eight. So we try to provide a journaling prompt for every layout. These tags seem to work out really nice and allow me to incorporate ribbon as finishing touches. This one goes in five and six. And the laugh and feel loved, seven and eight. The life quote that goes in seven and eight also. Winner, one and two. 
And then we have this uh, piece here. I'm gonna put the chess or checkerboard on the right and go at nine. Now the checkerboard print goes in one and two. And if you happen to have a one inch punch, you can punch out these checkers and it should go perfectly. So Jack has like a, a little perimeter around the checker and it gives you a really good visual alignment for centering it ever so perfectly. Perfect. And then the checkers are going to be used in layouts five and six. So I'll just drop those in there. I'll take scissors and just separate these out for now. Now I did uh, use a thin wafer thin die to cut these into circles. If you don't happen to have a die cutting machine and dies like that, it's not a problem. Just go ahead and cut your circle with scissors. Now what I like to do is use a scissors with a longer blade so I have fewer opens and closes. And then just move the paper while you squeeze the scissors rather than inching your way through in a choppy manner. Make your, your cuts as smooth as possible. Another thing you can do if you're hand cutting this with scissors is just uh, ink the edges a little bit with some of our earth ink to um, hide any imperfections in those cuts. But that turned out pretty nice, don't you think? Okay, so let us just get these filed. We've got this one going into pocket one and two. And then the other, these are gonna be used in five and six. Just a little bit more to go with the trimmer and we're gonna be set. So this one, playing for keeps, should be on the right. We'll cut at 10. And then seven and a half. Five. And two and a half. Okay, these first two go in pocket one and two. The next two go in pocket three and four. And then playing for keeps, five and six. Some strips to file. The two skinny diamond patterns both go in one and two, and then all the right moves, seven and eight. So clean up your area a little bit and we'll get ready to assemble our first two pages. And meanwhile, I found my word date landed on the floor. So I'm gonna pop that in pocket seven and eight. So if you have your printed instructions or if you're looking at a tablet or something or, or a desktop, turn to page four. At the bottom, you're gonna see layouts seven and eight, and that's the page we're gonna assemble first. So we're basically gonna build these pages from the bottom up so that you can adhere everything together and then add your photos from top down. It's kind of a, a neat arrangement that we have here. And I've got my stack of remaining papers, so take the whole stack and put it to the left of the center of your workspace and then slide the top of paper to the right. And that should give you the base for our first two pages, the, the metallic and then the bullseye print or the target print or board, whatever you want to call it. Um, target print, I called it. And I'm gonna see if we can get this all in frame here. Now, what do we need to finish layouts seven and eight? Well, we need everything in pocket seven and eight. So just be careful not to remove everything from pocket one and two, because that would be kind of my habit to do that. We got some frames here. We've got all these photo mats. What I find work, seems to work the best. Oh, and we even have a stray piece from something else I was working on in the pocket. That's never happened before. <laughs> okay, so this frame is in the pocket. We're gonna drop that down into the lower left corner here. And you'll find that there is a red square. So the red square should fit with that frame perfectly in the lower left corner. Across the top, I can take the slightly less wide red strip and nest it with the words, get your game on. And again, I love this kit that it, it is game specific, but yet wide open as far as how it can be applied to your pages. Then you have a nested mat for the lower right that says all the right moves. And you should have a black mat that's gonna fit this life is a game, play it, that goes up here. And then another black mat to fit life is short, spend it with friends who make you laugh and feel up, that goes lower right. So you can see we're balancing things out a little bit with this page. Now two horizontal red photo mats should fit right into this space. And then you can scoot that title down to frame that in. And then this one's gonna go above the border strip on the left. Then you've got your two four by sixes going here on the right. I know it's covering up my favorite element on this print, but that's okay. Um, we have the journaling prompt getting tucked in there. And now here you can see the word date. 
and it doesn't really fit onto this scrap. That's not a big deal. What I'm going to do is I'll end up attaching the word date to the red with glue because it's so little. And then I'm going to cut like a small edge and then remove the side like that. So imagine this is adhered and then this just gets tucked right behind the tag here. So you never even know it wasn't wide enough there. Now you saved yourself a scrap. Uh, there is a small little checker charm that I also attach to this spot. And I always do that with our bookbinding glue and a needle tipped applicator, but other embellishments. I, I have some um, nifty, this black and red checked ribbon. So on these tags, it looks really sweet if you nip the upper corners to match the artwork inspiration the bottom corners are square and then i'll i'm on the quarter inch setting of my corner chomper and then this gets nested punch your hole in the top and thread it with some ribbon bring the tails around to the back of the layout and i of course am going to show you my finished pages so starting with layout eight nothing dimensional here at all it's just the pieces layered in um, and attached of course with my with my grid ruler to make sure they're nice and level and neat and tidy then on the left page you can see how i punched the hole in the top of the tag threaded the ribbon brought the ends to the back and so i did this one first and attached this one and then here and this one um this tag added with foam adhesive circles worked like a charm and then attached my charm there again with the glue and you can see how it all came together quite beautifully and now we can move on to layout five and six. We're not gonna glue things together. That's as, about as exciting as watching paint dry. So take the, the taupe plane and slide it over to the right. And then the print, and I think that the, the backgammon board is sort of at the top of this. Again, I'm trying to make sure I have this in the frame while still being as close to my work as possible. And let's go ahead, let's see, we need this large frame that we had set aside from the die cuts. So that kind of brings everything, brings that backgammon into the picture. And let's empty everything from pocket five and six here. Add that in there again. And as I've mentioned, I like to distribute from my hand because it's hard sometimes to pick things up off the work surface. <laughs> okay, now this is kind of neat how this all worked out and just kind of bear with me here. I'm gonna fit the white photo mats here inside the frame in that one corner area toward the top corner with a little reveal around there. So I hope you can see that. Um, and then there's this larger red frame or red mat here that nests the uh, white inside of it. The white goes on top. Here we have a nice big cut apart. And oh, gee, see what I mean about picking things up off the table? I don't know why. I seem to be unable to do that lately. I think it's the dry air, the dry winter Wisconsin air. So these taupe metallics nest right on top like that look. This is a mat for our journaling prompt. I kind of make that pop off the right page a little bit. We've got a lot going on here. Now, this happy talent to know how to play is going to slide under our frame here, top to bottom. And it's also going to tuck in our photo mats. So just this is going to be adhered sort of right next to these nested photo mats, leaving this space open. This circle and this one will be added to the right side of the page. This kind of tucks in underneath here. I'll show you some finishing touches with that. We've got our uh, little center from the trimmed frames here. And then aim high is going to be added and then a taupe bow. We have this beautiful uh, taupe ribbon here with which I tied a basic bow. So I will quick show you how to do that. You make two bunny ears with the ribbon and then crisscross them. And you take the ear on the top and run it through the hole and then pull and then shape. You can just de determine how big you want your bow to be by controlling these loops and then pulling them in and out. And I don't want too big of a bow here. To get a swallow's tail, I just fold the ribbon in half and trim toward the fold and toward the knot to get that nice point in the ribbon. 
I'll do the same on the other side. And I'll mark this as a chapter in the video here so that you can review your basic bow making skills. And then that's gonna go right into that spot there. Of course, I did add all of the checkers, in other words, the flattened bottle caps to, my to this particular page. Now I have my bookbinding glue and I'm running low on the glue here, but I think I have enough. I'm gonna use my glue, you can hear I'm running out, to apply the adhesive to the base of that flattened bottle cap and then shove this piece in there and just really work your way in. Then before you add the epoxy sticker, take the nozzle of the glue again and run the perimeter of the bottle cap. Don't worry, the glue will dry clear. Then I'm gonna take the epoxy sticker and layer it on top. And that glue will make sure everything stays in place. And again, it will dry clear, but you won't be frustrated with it falling off the page. And then I did glue the checker itself to the page as well. So all of that stuff is included right here on the left side of the layout. Let's take a look at the finished one so we can see how this came together. Oh yes, I did use a the other bronze checker charm was used on the right side. Sometimes it's hard to see those things in the, in the instructions, so I wanna make sure I point those out. The circles were kind of overlaid. Again, I did cut these with my thin dies, my thin circular dies. I was able to find dies that worked uh, to size for each of those. Here I did the same trick with the checked ribbon, just love that look with the tag. And then I used a craft knife to, and a ruler to measure and cut the little notch out of this. If you don't have that, you can leave it whole as it is printed. You can see that it's still there, or you can just use scissors and eyeball that as well, whatever is your preference. On that other facing page, you can see my finished bow here. It's just a really sweet little finishing touch there and it pulls in that color of the, the beautiful taupe. And then how cool are those finished flat and bottle cap checkers? I love how those turned out. In fact, you could probably get a bunch of those bottle caps and make your own checkers game with that very thing. Now, I, as a side note, someone did post a comment on our Club Scrap chat thread this week, I think. How do you keep these working? And yes, sometimes those nozzles just get clogged. You can soak them in hot water. Um, it is water soluble, but I just keep a cork. And then in my cork, I keep my paper piercing tool for like setting brads and I keep a couple of hat pins. And hat pin is the, the key here. So if I get a clog, I just throw the hat pin into the nozzle and it clears it right up. I can sometimes get a, see the blockage in there and then just get it out. I know some people just keep their hat pin in their nozzle at all times. I am terrible about remembering. I'll come here in the morning and sure enough, I forgot to put the cap on this and it's plugged up. The hat pin has worked every time on this particular nozzle. Um, and I hope the same is true for you. So I hope that tip is helpful. Let's move on to the next pair of pages. So I'll slide page five and make sure you get the red base and not more than that. Slide this over. Okay, and then we're gonna get to sliding again. I'll get rid of that guy so he's not so bulky. And now I have the base for layouts three and four right in front of me. So let's take everything out of that pocket. So the easiest part now that I have everything out of the pocket is to show you where these frames go. So let's start with this cool one here that has the, the neat little decorative edge that's gonna go in the upper left corner of the right side. Then in the lower right corner, you'll add the one with the diamond border and just leave a little bit of margin between the edge of the frame and the edge of the paper. Next, I'm gonna take this square that has some of the dots on it. I'm gonna put it in this corner again, leaving a little bit of margin between these two pieces. And I think that's it for the frames. It doesn't like make a cool base for our page. We're just gonna build right on top of that. So take the red strip run it across and nest it with some checkers. We'll do that horizontally on the top here. And then the other direction is gonna go vertical on this left edge with the nested piece to kind of carry that through. As far as photo mats on the left side, these two black pieces will be vertical. So I'm carrying in the black from the right page onto the left. And then the taupe pattern will be horizontally across the top with that journaling prompt just overlapping on the right. The uh, game board here nests onto the red, so I'll place that there, and then we have the, the back gammon on the right going over here. I'll take two vertical photo mats, 
kind of up here so you can kind of still see all these frames. This piece gets nestled in. For this last frame, just tuck the corner of the photo mat underneath the popped out corner of the die cut. That looks kind of cool. And then that'll be placed in the upper left corner with that. And this page was pretty straightforward to assemble. You just glue everything down in the same order I showed you. I did make that double looped bow here with that granulated taupe ribbon, very beautiful, and attached my little hand of cards with foam, a foam adhesive uh, circle uh, that gave it a little dimension because that charm was more curved than I thought it was going to be. Okay, on the other side, I have, a, I have a nice tip for you with this velvet ribbon. It's a little bit bulky if you go around the edges as we normally would and tape to the back. So my solution to that is first attach your strip of your, your nested uh, cut apart strip here. Once that's on there, then take your glue and run a squiggly line of glue across so that you can adhere the velvet to the page itself. And you're gonna have that velvet go past the edges. Come in with scissors and cut the velvet to match the perfect length of the page. And then take the nozzle of your glue and just apply a little bit of the wet glue to that place. If you want, you can take your finger and tap it a little bit. It's gonna be white, but it will dry clear as you can see. And by doing that, you're gonna prevent that from getting frayed at the edge of each of these sides. I also love the look of that velvet ribbon on there. It just really classes it up beautifully, if I do say so myself. <laughs> okay, so now I'm gonna take these finished pages and set them aside, and we're gonna slide, and we're already landing here on layouts one and two, where we have the base papers as that subtle um, and beautiful pattern in that paper. I hope you can see it and enjoy it at home. And then we are gonna have to find Remember way back when we started hanging out together 38 minutes ago? Um, at least that's what I have on my, on my clock before I edit my boo-boos out of here. I've got this L-shaped piece. I'm going to place that into the lower right corner of this side. And then this one has that rounded corner. That's going to go kind of in the center of our base page here. Okay, now across the top, let's take a black strip that mess nests with this is where the fun stuff happens that's kind of our page title which i thought was really fun actually and oh then we have that other frame that i mis misplaced see that's why i like to assemble look at look at what i got going on here oh my goodness i'm dropping things on the floor this is a mess <laughs> this frame's gonna go right here and then I thought, you know, I just did an imperfect job here with my craft knife anyway. So I'm going to I'm going to actually use some nested black strips to cover the seam between the cut area and the paper itself. So I guess I could have used a trimmer, but you, you can't get that cool curved line on this one with that. Above this, I added a strip of the red velvet velvet in the same technique I showed you in the previous page. So if you skipped ahead to this page, go back and watch my tips on adhering the ribbon, the velvet. So here I have some nesting black mats. And whenever you uh, tilt, I always like to have one piece higher than the other and I like to have them overlapping slightly and that helps avoid tangents. Then underneath the right mat, you can add this, and I allowed it to extend past the edge of the, the board print here. Now in this spot, I thought it would be a great area for another photo mat, but what I did is I found the half inch setting on my corner chomper and just chomped two of the corners on the mat and placed it there. Here you'll notice too that um, the corners on this art are rounded and I did the rounding here and here, and that's gonna go right in this spot. Then you're gonna nest two red with life is like a game of chess. I don't know how to play chess. And then the chess board over here on the left side, which is kind of a fun compliment. Then this clearly does not fit, it's the same size. And all I did was took a craft knife and then a combination of a scissors and I trimmed this out and nested it onto this piece and then it does fit perfectly. So again, my goal of using having few scraps came to fruition. 
And now I wanna show you a kind of a neat technique that can be done, and this is completely optional. If you don't like the level of dimension provided by the actual game spinner piece we provided to you, you can skip this step or use this for another project. But I did something that was very, very helpful. This piece is actually the, the board or the, you know, the spinner piece that gives you the number. And if you're good enough with the craft knife, and you, you don't even need to be that good, you just cut along the pieces in the center, just that V-shaped area. The goal is to just remove these pointed shapes. And I'm so pleased with how this ended up working for the game piece. Now that I have that removed, it's like a star shape, right? This is so neat. This is the base of the game piece and make sure that your mounting a ridge is facing up and then you can just, it slides right on perfectly, right? And then this snaps into place. Now, once you snap it, it's gonna be really hard to separate it out. So just make sure you know that you want it snapped in there when you, when you add it. All right, so once it's uh, kind of mounted in there and then this is attached to your page, the spinner will work beautifully, like professionally. <laughs> so that's your professional spinner attachment service and that is gonna create a super cool embellishment on that page. So taking a look at those finished uh, pages, on this sheet is where I added all six of the little pieces. I thought with this quote play all the pieces every single day, it was perfect to use those sparkly gems. Glued them on with our bookbinding glue here again too. I applied glue to the ribbon to prevent fray on that and that way I didn't have to wrap the ends around the back causing unnecessary bulk. Then on this other side, you can see how cool that spinner looks. For mounting this into a page protector, you'll probably want to, you know, cut an opening for this to peek out so that the person can interact with this. And again, a plan B is to just to simply attach this as it is, or if you happen to have other kind of game needles in your stash, I know some of you have clock hands or, or other embellishments, go ahead and use those. And then too, you can see the, um, the trimmed out piece, the red, matted with you're a winner. Now, again, we don't have to make pages with our kits. We have tons of creative options for dimensional books and things like that. This is a stitch book called a memento holder that I'm going to be presenting uh, this month. And I use the entire kit as an alternative to making a page kit. I used it to make instead a, a book. And I think this would be a wonderful book for my upcoming snowmobile trips because we sled all day and we wear black all day long. And then when we get back, we tend to play games. So I think it's gonna be a fun, I can put my trail maps in here and my pass and whatever else I want in, in my book along with all the pictures from our fun week. So I hope you love this page kit. If you like the theme and you have a lot of friends you wanna send cards to, please join me for the card making class featuring the Fun and Games collection. We're gonna make four each of three different styles of really beautiful and entertaining cards. So I hope to see you there. Otherwise, I'll see you right back here next month. Thanks for joining me.